G'day, Troy here from Position Partners. This video is the second in a series where we're having a look at the basic functions and features of the iDig Touch, a 2D guidance system for any excavator. In the first video, we had a look at the layout of the main screen, basic functions, and a deep dive into the work settings. In this video, I'm gonna be going over how to set and change benchmarks, use the laser catch function, and a closer look at the tape measure and height alarm functions. Once we get out of lockdown, I'm looking forward to bringing you videos of iDig out in the field. In the meantime, it's just me and my little demo unit. Remember, if you've got any questions or feedback, please leave a comment below. It'd be great to hear from you. With that all done, let's crack on. In a world where construction technology can often be complicated, the iDig is a refreshing change, especially where it counts when you're out digging on the job. The main functions of setting and changing benchmarks are all achieved with a couple of touches, and this simple process remains throughout the entire iDig system. To set a quick benchmark, simply place the cutting edge of the bucket onto a point and then dial in the depth you want to reach. You can now dig 360 degrees around and to this set depth and the LED display will guide you to your zero. The key thing to remember with iDig is that it doesn't know its position on the job site. You have to tell it where it is and each time you move and before you start digging you need to quickly rebench yourself. This means in practice that each time you track, change the angle or position of the excavator, you need to quickly re-reference before you start digging. And as you can see, this is super quick and easy. If you've moved far enough away from your original reference, you may not be able to place the cutting edge onto the mark and reset. So you've got a couple of options. You could reset your benchmark by placing the cutting edge on a section you've already trimmed and setting this as a zero. There's certainly a place for this method as it's quick and easy. However, there is the chance that you could carry an error over a site by setting this new zero ever so slightly wrong. To guarantee accuracy, we suggest using a rotating laser to carry the reference across your whole site. The iDig has been designed to work with any brand of rotating laser. Once you've used the laser a half dozen times, you'll soon find this becomes your go-to method as it's really quick and really easy to reset yourself each time you move. Start by setting up your rotating laser on your work site, preferably on the same side of the job as your combo sensor is as that will make it easier and quicker to catch the beam when you need to rebench. To set up the iDig to catch a laser, place your cutting edge on a known reference point and press the laser lock icon. You're now presented with two options. These are letting the iDig work out the difference between your final depth and the laser beam, or entering a known height if you've used a staff and a receiver to work this out. Due to small differences between makes and models of laser receiver and the iDig combo sensor, my advice is to always let the iDig work out this height for consistency. Make sure to place the cutting edge onto your reference point if it's not already. Press the pencil icon to enter in your desired height and press the green tick to initiate the laser catch. On the laser catch screen, depending on your settings, the vertical bar in the screen will direct you to the correct position of the laser beam. On the left, under the sensor readout, are your laser catch settings. Off, fine, plus or minus one centimeter, and auto enabled. Off means you have to manually press the green tick to set the catch, not recommended to use this setting. Fine is the most accurate setting. Plus or minus one centimeter sacrifices a small amount of accuracy for speed. Auto enabled is the one touch setting for catching a laser. You'll only ever be using the fine and the plus or minus one centimeter settings, so leave the other two as they are. Catching the laser on fine means the iDig is picking up the laser beam in the very center of the combo sensor, similar to a receiver on a staff where it knows exactly where the zero is. Because of this, the laser can be a little tricky to pick up at first as you adjust the boom and dipper to place the sensor in exactly the right spot. But as you get used to the position of the laser and the shape of the boom and dipper, this quickly becomes second nature. Use the fine setting for when you need the most accuracy. Using the plus or minus one centimeter setting means that the iDig sets the position of the beam as soon as it is detected by the combo sensor. Because of this, it is slightly less accurate than the fine setting, but it is much faster to catch the laser. Use the plus or minus setting when speed counts and you've got a bit more tolerance to play with. Once you've set your benchmark with the laser, a line now appears on the side profile view with a distance measurement between the laser beam and the final reference point you're digging to. Now just work as per normal, using the LED display to guide your digging. 
When you have moved and are ready to start digging again, simply press the laser catch icon. Move the boom and dipper to catch the laser beam and pause to let it lock on. And once you've done, you're all set to get digging again. As you can see, catching the laser is just a one touch process. Very simple and very quick. If you need to change the depth you are digging to, for example, you need to step down a ring foundation to a new level or raise up the next layer of backfill, iDig makes this easy. Simply press the offset icon and select the direction you are needing to move the reference. All you then need to do is enter how much you are adding to the original benchmark. This works the same even if you are using a rotating laser. This simple process saves you heaps of time having to move your rotating laser or set up new benchmarks. Well, that wraps up this quick look at the laser catch functionality and changing benchmarks on the iDig Touch. I hope you found it informative and if there's anything else that you'd like me to cover off in more detail, please let me know in the comments below. I know I did say that I'd also touch on the hide alarm and the tape measure functions, but I'll cover that off in the next video. I might make a 2.5 to fit in before we talk about using the slope selection. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.